With Typhon finally having been released, a little behind schedule, it is time to look forward into our near future to see who's upcoming and worth pulling for, and look into a basic overview of their kits so you can have some familiarity with them once they drop on global. At the end, I'll give a brief pulling guide on the upcoming units based on their general usefulness, and I'll throw in those next 6 months on that list out of context, so let's get into it. Jessica the Sad Cat is the first 6 star sentinel added to the game. Jessica is weird to talk about since she's very much a luxury unit that has her good points and her drawbacks too. Jessica's first talent, Adaptable, allows her to deploy a mobile personnel shield that lasts for 50 seconds. The shield can only be deployed in the 4 tiles adjacent to Jessica. After the shield is deployed, Jessica immediately changes direction to face the shield and grants 50% defense to herself and the unit behind her. This talent is the main gimmick of Jessica, allowing her to turn in any direction to help your units out. It also provides a mini gravel that blocks too making Jessica block 5 when the shield is available, a very good defensive talent. Her second talent, Charge and Release, makes it so whenever her shield is attacked, she gets a 50% chance to give herself 1 SP, another good talent that will help Jessica charge her skills faster and help her keep up high defense and attack on skill more frequently. Both talents aid in Jessica being a good all-rounder with good amounts of defense and block with her shield and keeping up a decent amount of attack by cycling her skills with the SP charge. Jessica's third skill, Saturated Burst, it increases Jessica's range by 1, increases her attack interval, increases her attack by 310%, 80% more defense, and her shield gets 170% more defense as well. When the shield is deployed, it immediately fires a shell that explodes upon hitting an enemy or reaching the end of its range, dealing 200% physical damage to all enemies within the range and stuns them for 6 seconds. Once the skill is activated, Jessica gains 20 ammo, and the skill ends when she runs out of ammo. This skill can be manually deactivated. This skill makes Jessica a very strong hybrid defender when her shield is deployed. Her shield essentially takes no damage, and you can stall strong enemies on it when her skill is on. She also gets a nice boost in attack, and if you time the shield, she can take care of a group of enemies and stall them with her stun. Overall, a decent hybrid choice. Following the trend that will be for this video, the big man himself Odorer is the first 6 star crusher added to the game. Now we all know how much crushers are looked down upon in this community, but let's see what our first 6 star outing has to offer. Odorer's first talent, Timely Assault, makes Odorer get a flat increase to 110% of his attack when he's attacking enemies. This further increases to 140% if the enemies are stunned or bound. This talent just makes him do more damage as well as giving him some nice pair-ups with the Dark Knight's trio, to make him easily proc his 140% attack increased condition. Enus behind him is the best way to do this. Hodorur's second talent, Ember Coat, grants Hodorur 18% shelter to himself and the unit behind him. This talent helps Hodorur overcome the major flaw of Crushers, by letting him take a little more by reducing all incoming arts and physical damage by 18%. Both talents try to improve what's good about Crushers, their damage, and fix its problems, which is the lack of offense. Hodorer's third skill, Smog of Encroaching Death, makes Hodorer lose 100 HP every second. Enemies that have been attacked by Hodorer receive 200% true damage every second, he gets an extra tile of range, his max HP gets increased by 60%, attack is increased by 120%, and every time he attacks, he recovers 5% of his HP. He gets a 25% chance to stun his target for 5 seconds. This skill makes Hodorur a damage dealing beast by giving him self sustain and the ability to proc his own talent by being able to stun the enemies while the skill is active. It also lasts forever at a whopping 70 seconds. A very good skill that when paired up with Ines or other binders and stunners lets Hodorur do big funny damage. The loss of HP is negligible, just make sure he has a babysitting healer just in case. Vivian is the second 6 star arts card added to the game and she is as disappointing as she is pretty. Viviana's first talent, Candlelight, gives Viviana 8% more arts damage and decreases any incoming damage by 8%. If there are elite or boss enemies within attack range, this effect is doubled. A very defensive talent that highlights her one-on-one -on -one nature, specifically against elites, and this can be really seen in her second talent. Viviana's second talent, Scattering Flowers, is when attacking elites or boss enemies, there's an 18% chance to gain one layer of shield that can only block melee attacks. A defensive skill meant for elites and bosses to ensure that Vivi is able to survive even large attacks that could one-shot her. Luckily, it's restricted to only melee attacks, so ranged enemies won't be taking away her shield. Both talents show her defensive nature in stark contrast to the Red Woman who nukes everything out of existence. But maybe her ability to survive will be paired with an ability to kill things, so let's take a look at her skill. Vivi's S3 lights out, Increases her attack interval, increases attack by 110%, increases defense by 90%, and gives her 25 res. Her attacks hit twice. 
It increases her second talent activation by two and a half times, and she will prioritize elite or boss enemies. On the second skill activation and onwards, she gets an extra two tiles of range, her attacks hit three times, and her skill duration increases to 25 seconds. She gets a substantial attack increase, with her attacks hitting three times, and she is able to proc her second talent frequently enough that during skill, Vivi usually has her shield protecting her. Her extra range also lets her damage enemies before they get to her. While her damage is okay, and she has very good survivability, ultimately, Vivi feels like an Astasia 6 star version, instead of the powerhouse she seemed like in CC, and she doesn't really reflect her NPC version. I guess that was safe for a certain someone in the future. Virtuosa is the first 6 star ritualist added to the game, and she is limited. Let's see how the other highly anticipated NPC fared in becoming a playable unit. Virtuosa's first talent, Warless Carols, inflicts Necrosis damage equal to 10% of her attack to all enemies within her attack range, and slows them for 0.2 seconds every second. This is a very strong talent that helps Arturia proc Necrosis Fallout while also working as a free Deathout Binder by slowing everyone in her range. Virtuosa's second talent, Mental Inversion, is enemies within her attack range receive 20% more Necrosis damage. Again, another talent that lets Arturia proc follow damage without having to work too hard for it. Both talents are aimed to make use of her archetype's ability of dealing elemental damage to the best of its abilities. We can see this in her third skill, Freedom's Tango. It makes Vitrosa stop attacking enemies, it expands her range, increases her attack by 180%, increases her talent 2 effect by 2.5 times, and within the skill duration, increases the stats of other allies within attack range. 30% max HP to the ally with the highest max HP, 30% attack to the ally with the highest attack, and 30% defense to the ally with the highest defense. This is quite a good skill that will apply Necrosis Fall to anyone that isn't a boss pretty much. And even those aren't safe. The second effect of buffing your allies is a nice bonus, but a little tricky since you need to plan ahead to make full use of the buff she gives. If there's only one unit within her range, that operator will get all of the buffs. This stretch does not have many high priority units unlike the last few months where we had both Typhon and Aya Alter. So now it is time to give these operators a priority in terms of their overall usefulness and a meta sense. Remember this is just my opinion, you should always pull who you want. Starting from C in release order, Jessica the Sad Cat. She lands in medium priority. She is quite the all around defender that can be used in many situations. She is quite tanky on skill and her ability to have a free 2 block shield should not be underestimated since it can not only save Jessica by your whole front line by blocking dangerous enemies. She also makes a lot of use from IS4 Relic, so she's fun in that mode too. Landing on the bottom edge of medium priority, Hodor shows that Crusher Guards can be good, but require a lot of the team to be set up around him. He does big funny damage, but is a healing sponge due to his, well, zero defense. He's fun to use when he's paired with Ines, so he can always proc his talent, and his S1 with spinach is funny in IS4. Viviana lands in low priority, but just like Spire before her, she comes paired with the limited banner, meaning you have a high chance of pulling her regardless. Viviana is quite weak despite her ability to grant herself shields and the ability to stall out enemies. She is usable, but in meta sense, the only reason to use her is because you like her. Virtuosa is the sole character from this bash that lies in high priority for being both a limited unit and being quite the strong character herself. Her ability to slow and inflict elemental damage is worth the pull alone for the fact that she can CC enemies without relying on any skill. Her massive range on S3 deals with most mob and heavy enemies easily, and against bosses she's able to do a considerable amount. Her buff to allies within range is another nice benefit that comes as a cherry on top. A strong must pull, if anything, for making your 600 point pyrolysis clear much easier. Now, here's the next 6 months overview out of context for you guys. However, while I won't go into deals about her kit, Dagenbrecher, who comes after Virtuosa's banner, is the strongest unit released in the last 9 months and easily stands on top of the meta. If you are going for pure meta DPS, you might want to consider saving for her. So that's it, I'll see you guys next time.